Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Thanks for being here. I, oh, I'm excited for today's guest because we are talking all about sex, ladies. And I've been doing this for a long time. I've been in the health industry for a very long time. And I will tell you right now, the number one complaint I get, besides the weight gain complaint, <laughs> is where is my libido, Karen? Like I, you know, I hit 40 and suddenly it disappeared. And the same thing happened to me too. It was 40, it hit, and that was like this slow decline of where's my libido? What's happening to my vagina? Come on, what's going on here? So I wanted this very special woman to come and tell us all the goods on what is happening to our body. How do we get our sexual flame reignited um, for both men and women, which I think is great, and same-sex partners. And she talks about all of these things in her amazing book. Uh, my guest is Susan Bratt. Bratton. She is a champion and advocate for all who desire passionate relationships, which I think we all do, because she is considered the dear Abby of sex. Susan's fresh approach and original ideas have helped millions of people of all ages and across the gender spectrum transform sex into passion. Susan Bratton is an intimacy wellness expert and an advocate for all those who desire intimacy and passion their whole life long. Susan is a CEO and co-founder of Personal Life Media. Through her company, Susan has authored 20 books, including Relationship Magic, The Passion Patch, and 30 Romance Tricks That Work Like Magic, as well as her international number one Amazon bestseller, Sexual Soulmates, The Six Essentials for Connected Sex. Susan believes that shame-free, frequent sexual pleasure is every man and woman's birthright. So hallelujah to that. So welcome, Susan. <laughs> Karen, you know, it's so funny. Here I am talking about sex and I haven't had sex for two months. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and that's because no, I, Susan. <laughs> I know I'm the one that's supposed to be representing for all of us. And, and I really haven't made love for two months. I've, as I told you just before we started the show today, I've been battling coronavirus for yeah. a couple of months. I've been down for a sum total of going on six weeks. And, um, you know, I, I, I got sick and then I, I felt better and I went back and I hit it hard, you know, yeah. and I tried to make up for lost time and it knocked me back down again. <laughs> and uh, today is the first day. You are the first person that I am talking to in weeks. Wow. I've got my makeup on. I'm in yep. actual clothes and not my nighty. <laughs> and um, uh, the one thing that I, that I wanted, the, the reason that I wanted to share that is that when your, he your health and your libido are inextricably oh entwined yeah. and when you don't feel well you don't have desire and I think for a lot of women we tend to run around feeling guilty yeah we feel like we aren't attractive we feel like we should have more desire we we feel like we should be having good sex there's so much internal pressure that we create and put on ourselves that even our partners aren't putting on us. And I wanted to start the conversation around libido with that as the focal point that yeah. for a lot of us, we think that we should have the same sexual appetite as our male bodied partners. Yeah. And a and lot of our times, male partners think that too. They think that they why do. don't they want to have sex? Like I want to have sex. Yes, they do. And that's because they're driven by testosterone as their dominant hormone. And we're driven by estrogen as ours. Now, the good thing is that because because we have estrogen as dominance, our lovemaking desire ebbs and flows. Even after menopause, we're very cyclical women. We're women who run with the wolves and the moon, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but our men are very much more steady state. And so their desire is always there knocking on their door. The good news about testosterone is that it has rose colored goggles. When it looks at us, it sees the beauty in us. It doesn't see the things we as estrogen dominant women see in ourselves with a critical judging eye. Mm. <laughs> estrogen mm -hmm. is a critic. 
And testosterone yep. is not. That's good to know, Susan. Full speed ahead. And estrogen is, oh my God, I got to think about this and that and this and that and this and that. We have a hard time settling into our bodies. Yeah. So I love that because I always think like my body's changing as I'm going through perimenopause and yeah. it's like it go in, you know, times that where I was pregnant and I'm this, like I've gained like 60 pounds and then yeah. get to trying to get it back off again. And I always am like thinking to myself, what is my husband thinking? Like, is he like, Oh God, she's so unattractive or she's a, you know, but honestly with the times that I've talked to him about and I 100% believe him is he's like, I don't need, I just, I see you the same. It does just, yeah doesn't make any difference to me. And I think, isn't that amazing that men, it's like, well, no, I still want to have sex with you. You might've put on some weight. They don't see it. They're just, that's so different, isn't it? They, it's a, it's a different driving force. Well, and another thing too, I think about lovemaking is, and, and I like, I don't really like to call sex, sex. Yeah. I like to call it lovemaking because that's the kind of sexuality that is my hallmark. It's how to transform having sex into making love. And I think that for most women, we want it to be a more passionate, emotional, heart-connected, sensual, pleasuring experience. And so for us, we have to remember, if we're in the female body, that our lovemaking is a mindfulness practice. Part of it is that every time you start to think, oh, does my belly, is my belly hanging down? Do my boobs look like torpedoes? Does my, <laughs> does my butt look a mile wide? Yeah. <laughs> Can you see cellulite? You know, whatever. Every time those thoughts enter our head, our mindfulness practice has to immediately take that thought and transform it into you are loved, you are beauty, you have, your body is amazing, sensuality is the spiritual and heart connection, the physical is a tiny part of it. And we have to keep coming back to those affirmations so mm -hmm. that we can let go of those thoughts that make us really harsh on ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and let go of our thoughts and sink into sensation and connection with our partner. Anytime we're having performance anxiety around how we look or our fear of being able to achieve climax or whatever it might be, the more that we can just let those thoughts float away or replace them with things that empower us, the better we are in getting into the present moment. You talked about sexual soulmates, the six essentials to connected sex. And one, that's probably my, my second best selling book, actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, You've written a lot of books, Susan. I think I read 34. 34. Yeah. That's that amazing. Last count. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've but got something for everybody out there. I do because yeah. sexuality is such a wide yeah. range. There's techniques you know, so pleasuring skills and there's bedroom communication skills and then there's sexual health and wellness. And unless you have some knowledge in all three as an individual, you could run into problems. But the more that you know about pleasuring skills, the more you're able to communicate your needs and to talk to each other, talk to your partner about anything and feel safe. And the more that your body feels good and solid and it's working right and you're not struggling with whatever it might be, vaginal lubrication, vaginal pain, incontinence, you know, these are big ones for women. Uh, low libido, a feeling of a lack of desire, which I really want to get into. With yeah, you. me too. Yeah. You got to kind of know about all that stuff. And so I do, I have written 34 books and 200 videos and you yeah. know, all that stuff because it's a um, wide ranging topic. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> so let's because in my practice, I'm working with women that are heading into perimenopause or yeah. they're in menopause. So mm -hmm. like I said before, it's the first thing to go some of the time. Besides the weight gain, women are going, where's my libido? And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's so frustrating for women because, yes, they, they do lose vagina lubrication. They, it hurts sometimes to have sex. And then the, just the desire is not there anymore. So explain to us what's happening here. Why, why is this happening? <laughs> 
Well, a lot of women think that their hormone, the, the loss of estrogen is the thing that's depressing their libido. And it's not really. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it definitely has some impact on vaginal mucosal turgidity. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Which is the tissue being springy in your vagina. <laughs> yep. But a big part of that is actually not the lack of estrogen, a, a large part. And, and I know this because you can have pain full intercourse from feeling almost like there's ground glass in your vagina and penetration will hurt, especially around the opening to the vagina, the introidal sphincter that's called, right. um, because of the tissue not having enough estrogen, but it's also about losing blood flow, losing nitric oxide production. Your, uh, your vagina doesn't have any glands that, that lubricate. It actually, what happens is blood flow goes to your vaginal area, goes to your pelvic bowl, and the, your vagina recruits the fluid from your blood plasma right through the walls. So the biggest issue that women end up having in menopause is mostly being bored with their partner. Ah. It's not really a lack of libido, it's sheer boredom. Wow. And having always rushed sex, because when he has a hard on, he's ready to go, so she feels like she has to be ready. And so years of having sex before she's fully lubricated and turned on, every time she does that, her yoni, which is another word for your vulva or your female genitalia, it's a, a tantric sex word, it's a, a Sanskrit word. Um, I really like it. Yoni is the female, like lingam is the male. And I like the word yoni. It reminds me of a beautiful blossoming flower. Every time your yoni has sex before she's ready, she gets a little chip on her shoulder. Mm -hmm. And over the years, if it's not as good as she wished it was, and she does it out of duty, she is less and less interested in having sex. And so I think that that's one thing. The second thing that I think happens for many women is um, gut dysbiosis. Oh, wow. So if you are not, if you're, poo if you're not pooing, where every morning you get up and you have a nice, easy poop of beautiful poop, then that means there's something not right in your gut. If you have irritable bowel syndrome, if you have constipation, if you have, you know, f bouts of diarrhea, um, if you have any issue at all going to the bathroom, there's something upstream that's off. Usually it's candida overgrowths in women because we eat a lot of carbs and sugar or it's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or it's you were taking antibiotics and it wrecked your microbiome. So all of those kinds of things have to be corrected because most of your hormones are, and your neurotransmitters, which are your happy, feel good, I feel great. Oh, when I feel great, I want to have sex. When those aren't flowing, and being produced in your gut when you have stress, when you have a lot of cortisol irregulation, when you have uh, thymus and thyroid issues, um, you're not getting enough iodine, you're not eating liver and things like that. You know, all of the HPA, the hypothalamic pituitary axis, combined with the gut dysbiosis, so the dysregulation of hormones and gut dysbiosis suppresses hormone production. So you might be going through perimenopause with estrogen declining from your ovary production, but it's extra declining because of the gut issues that you might be having. So yeah. the first thing you wanna look at is, am I getting enough healthy fats? And what am I going to do to change my nutrition profile from carb heavy or meat heavy to vegetable heavy, to organic vegetable heavy, with lots of nuts, fruits, seeds, avocados, coconut oil, 
um, avocado oil, fish oil, fresh ground flax seeds, um, vitamin E, which is an anti-inflammatory oil, omega-3s in fish oils, not eating French fries or any fried foods anymore. Once you get the oil cod liver oil, a big giant spoon of it a day. Once you get that oil, it's like you're a car and you're running on the wrong gas. Yeah. So once you get that nice, those fats going that are good for your brain, they're neuroprotective, and you take care of your blood flow. By the time you hit 40, between 40 and 60, you have half the nitric oxide production capability in your body. Wow. As you did when you were younger in your 20s and 30s. Nitric oxide is produced in your blood vessels, at your veins, your capillaries. It's uh, how the pipe of your blood opens and closes. It's called vasodilation. And you can't pump blood into your yoni to get that lubrication to feel desire without good nitric oxide. Nitric oxide comes from eating leafy green vegetables and wow. things like beets and uh, kohlrabis and cabbages and arugula and um, lettuce and ch chard and bok choy. So um, if you're not eating them and if you're using uh, bacterial mouthwash, you're killing off the bacteria that converts the nitrates in the leafy greens and reds, what? all the polyphenols. Yeah kills them. And then when you get to your stomach, if you're taking Tums or Pepsid or antacids, because you've got acid reflux because you eat too much sugar and carbs <laughs> and or not the, enough leafy greens. Yeah. And the proton <laughs> pump inhibitors. The which, proton pump yeah. inhibitors, all those. Then your body uses the stomach acid to turn the nitrates into the nitric oxide. And you've, that whole system can be ruined. So where are we? We just got back to the gut again, right? Yeah, yeah. So your blood flow, your cardiovascular health, the, all the blood pumping into your brain can't get there to make your hormones are made in your ovaries as well as in your gut. And your brain is what your pineal gland and all of those kinds of things are what signal the hormone production. If this connection's gone bad, you're not optimally producing your hormone levels. And it's not just estrogen. You need estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone yes. for your sex hormones. And testosterone is actually what makes you horny. Yeah. So the estrogen is what can make the vaginal mucosa start to feel bad. But the testosterone is what depresses your desire in addition to not getting the level of engorgement that you need. You need a lot of blood flow. The thing that bums me out is that, that the world only looks at erectile dysfunction as a, ma as a man's issue. Mm -hmm. But if your man has any type of erectile dysfunction, it's likely that you do too, because you're eating typically the same foods or very similar foods. And we women have as much erectile tissue in our yoni as men do in their penile structure. And it's always this talk about men, but yeah. women need engorgement, which is the flush of blood flow to our genital structure to allow us to feel pleasure. So as your nitric oxide declines, and you've got this gut dysbiosis suppressing the hormone production, you've got these physiologic issues that mean you, sex doesn't feel as good as it used to. Your orgasmic response might be lower in intensity or in uh, you might struggle to achieve the climaxes that you used to. But then you also have the mental piece, which is you're mad at how you look, you don't like getting old, you're hard on yourself, you're a little pissed off at your partner because you've had all this sex with them and they're constantly asking you and it's really not that good for you anymore. So it's kind of this, you know, Gordian knot that we get caught up in 
mm-hmm. with regard to our libido. So how do you improve that? Well, ground zero is green vegetables. Second thing is, and cutting down on, on sugar and bad fat, good fats and green vegetables are the savior of your sex life. And then you can take supplements. Um, and I, I make a line of supplements and I can tell you about it. The one that I would like to tell you about the most is flow, which is a blood flow supplement made wow. from organic spinach, organic watermelon, organic acerola cherries, and pine bark, believe it or not. It has oh. polyphenols, procyanidins, which are actually a tannin that improves blood flow. Women write to me all the time and they say, I started taking flow and I'm literally walking around moist without oh. even thinking about sex. And what's nice is even though vaginal lubrication is not an indication of arousal, right? when we feel lubricated, we feel more aroused. We so do. it's, a, it, yes. it's a signal to us, yeah. even though you could be really, really turned on and dry because there's different systems in your body. It's a heck of a lot easier yeah. to feel your libido <laughs> when you've got great blood flow to your genitals and to your brain and to your heart and all your parts. So why the acerola cherry? It's funny that you would say that because I was looking into it as a replacement for just regular vitamin C. I can't take yeah. it. So I was yeah. looking to see, okay, well, what kind of, maybe I could get it from just a natural source. And that was yeah. the thing that came up the most was that. So what, what does that do for the vagina? Well, uh, so nitric oxide is a gas, a signaling molecule in your blood, uh, in, in the pipes of your vascular system, all your vessels, capillaries, veins. And what it does is when your body, let's just say, okay, you had a meal and your body's like, oh, send the blood down to your tummy to digest or, oh, she's kissing her husband. Send the blood down to her yoni to get her lubricated or she's working on this big project. Send the blood to her brain so she can think. Your blood is always move, being moved around. Oh, it's cold out. Send blood to your fingers and toes. Um, your body is always moving the blood around where it needs to go. But when you get half the ability to get that blood moving, you start to get heavy legs, heavy, heavy fingers, you know, tingling fingers. You've seen people whose noses are literally white at the tip because there's no blood flow in them as they age, right? So uh, I can't remember where I put this thing, you know, all that yeah. stuff. A big part of it is lack of oxygen in the places where you need the blood flowing. So the blood brings the oxygen into the tissue and organs. Well, what happens is that oxidation and inflammation are the two things that begin to suppress your ability to send the blood around. So you have this diminished nitric oxide production and you have higher oxidative stress and inflammation like C-reactive protein and things mm -hmm. like that. So what do you do? You want vitamin C. It's a, the world's most beautiful antioxidant and an antioxidant taken with the nitrates and the nitrites that really, and the citrulline, I use citrulline, which is the watermelon in mm -hmm. mine because I have been a herpes sufferer my whole life and 75% of women over 40 have herpes. Oh, wow. Uh, it's very prevalent uh, because, you know, you, you can get it and people can't tell when they're shedding. It's very similar to coronavirus. And right. <laughs> it's a virus and yeah. you can't tell when you're asymptomatic and you could give it to someone, right? So it's a very prevalent virus. And for some people, they really, really suffer with it. And, and arginine is one of the things that's in almost all blood flow supplements. When people are like, I'm going to protect my cardiovascular health and my brain function, they take a nitric oxide booster. But the problem is they're almost all made with arginine. So it cuts out all the people who have herpes who don't want to chance getting a flare. So citrulline is what I use. It's a higher quality product made from organic watermelon. And then I balance it with the vitamin C made from acerola cherries. Mm. And that way you've got the antioxidant with the nitric oxide precursor working together mm -hmm. so that it's lowering the oxidative stress and increasing the nitric oxide for vasodilation and blood flow where you need it to go. Nice. I also did a lot of studying about um, vitamin C 
and ascorbic acid. Mm -hmm. Ascorbic acid is made in big vats in China. What they do is they get a whole bunch of corn. And of course, that corn, they've grown that by spraying it with pesticides to get the highest yield crops. And God knows what pesticides they are. They cut the corn down and they put it in a big vat and they make corn liquor from it, which is essentially they heat it up so the kernels release the sugar. And then they inoculate it with a bacteria and they ferment the bacteria and the bacteria eats the corn liquor, eats the sugar, and it basically, that particular bacterial strain poops out the arginine. And then if they want to, they send it through another fermentation process. And that fermentation process converts, it puts a bacteria in that poops out citrulline. So whether you buy argin arginine or citrulline, you're getting all the pesticides right passed down in through that vat into that white powder that they sell in big bulk drums. It is a dirty, disgusting business. So there, I mean, you, if you look at the Linus Pauling Institute, which is, uh, you know, one of the um, preeminent, it's the University of Washington. It's the, it's the preeminent research on vitamin C in the world. Yeah. And um, they say that functionally, ascorbic acid and the vitamin C from an acerola cherry or an amla berry which is another high source of vitamin C. Other things are like goji berries and other things like that. Um, they have the same cellular effect on you. But for me, I don't need anything that's not organic. I I'll just pass on it. Yeah. And yeah. so I don't want to have ascorbic acid. I did a vitamin C flush two days ago to see if I could get rid of my coronavirus. Have you ever done one? Yes, I have. Yeah. That's a hard thing to do, man. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. Um, Gives you I diarrhea. So much diarrhea. Yeah, so much diarrhea. I had it for like a couple days. Mm -hmm. um, it was quite an interesting thing, but I do think that it does help to detoxify and, and get out yeah. a lot of stuff. But I've been searching online, like what exactly does a vitamin C flush detoxify? What exactly does it do? I haven't found any good data on it. I'm not sure I would do it again. Yeah, I would use it more for if you're backed up and you need to get some of the things rolling down there. I think that's why I did it. It was years ago where it was interesting. I, I did it because I wanted to see if it could help flush my bowels, but that was the only reason, which magnesium well, can do the same thing. Yeah, and I've been hearing, well, and that's the other thing. If you need to flush your bowels, why? Right. Why? I mean, yeah. that's the other piece of it is if that's what people are resorting to, um, there's got to be a better longer term solution to fixing that issue. I mean, there like is. Going back to constipation. Yeah. You got to look at why. You got to look yeah. at why. Yeah. Hey, yeah. and we live and we learn. And one of the great mm -hmm. things that I love about your show is how many people you have on who share personal information and really good healthy trends yeah um you know it's hard to keep up with everything and there's so much crap on the internet it's, yeah it seems like worse now than ever you know? <laughs> it really so. is just trying to cut through it all is tough and trying to get the right people on that can share good quality information yes it's tough it's tough it for is. sure yeah I, know. I think i do a good job at picking my people though <laughs> Definitely. There's, you included, I can't, like, I had no idea that it was about oxygen and the would you, would nitric oxide. Yeah. Nitric oxide. It's just like, I never heard that before. I was like, Oh, that's not yeah. where I thought this was going to go. So I think that that's so cool. And I think too, like you flow, I think that, and, and that you use natural sources in your supplement product is great. You're not taking yeah. these synthetic vitamins and throwing them in there. They're from a food source, which is yeah. great. Yeah. But you, you know, going back to even what you said right in the beginning there about, it's not so much that our hormones are, are depleted. It's that we get that it, we're bored, that we've had yeah. these partners for a while. And I think yeah. that that's a really key thing. Cause I talk about this often, which is when we're going through perimenopause and menopause, it's also a major transitional spiritual time for women. And it's a time where they finally start to think about themselves for the first time in their life. Like they're done having the kids, they're moving towards something different. Like the career has been chosen at this point, you know, you're either keeping your husband or you've gotten rid of him by now. And it's like this, it's the first time you, you just go inward. It's like, what do I want? 
Yeah. And so that must have something to do with it where because you, for the first time, are being selfish, and I say that in a really good way, when you're looking at what do you want, that you can't handle that sexual pressure that you once were able to put up with. Yeah. And suddenly you're going, what about me? What do I yeah. want here? Like this, you know, what about my pleasure? And I know so many women that are in these relationships where they're not having orgasms and they're done having sex. And can we come back from that? Like, yeah. can, like, tell us how, Susan, tell us how. <laughs> yeah. The, um, I, when I, I, I was 45 before I had my first orgasm from intercourse. Wow. Yeah. And um, when you say that, can I just clarify? Yeah. Are we talking, you're getting an internal orgasm? Because I think that that's quite rare for women. I think most women, myself included, I have to have external stimulation during intercourse in order to orgasm. So are we talking pleasuring yourself during sex or are you talking you actually were able to reach orgasm with just penis alone? Yeah, just penis alone. Okay, wow. Okay. And every woman can, and it's a learned skill. Um, and most people don't do it naturally, yeah. but um, you can do it. And the trick is, um, first of all, under understanding how to have an orgasm from maybe clitoral stimulation. Um, and different women are wired in different ways. Different things feel good to different women. But there are at least 15 kinds of ways that you can have orgasmic pleasure. And the, it goes down to anatomy more than anything else. Um, the, fir the first thing that you have to have is comfort with your partner and not feeling any pressure, but feeling turned on by them. The second thing that you have to have is plenty of blood flow. I can't, you can't tell you that blood flow is really, besides just your comfort with your partner, it's the single most important thing that's gonna help you have better orgasms. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy amazing. how important yeah. it is and how underlooked it is for women. Yeah. Uh, you know, everything's about guys and getting blood flow into their penis. Well, yeah. we have, as I said, exactly the same amount of erectile tissue and nobody's talking about us. No. So, except me, I am talking about us girls and our tissues. So if you think about the clitoral structure, the erectile tissue structure, there's the clitoral head, which is poking out at various degrees, varying degrees for varying women. And then there's, it's attached to a little shaft. And then it breaks into a wishbone and the two little arms drape over the opening to the vaginal canal. And then it has these two little legs that are like little punching bags that hang down lower. And they're actually underneath the fur, the pubic hair on each side of the opening to your yoni. They're right there. They're pads of erectile plumpy tissue. And then inside the vagina, if you go in the vagina, there's sensitive tissue around the opening. That's the introidal sphincter that we talked about earlier. There's nerve endings there that like pressure, the pressure of a penis or a toy. And then inside the vaginal canal on the roof, the top of your cave is your, it's not a G spot. It's actually your urethral sponge. And that is a tube of spongy tissue that goes all, it wraps your whole urethral tube. Um, which it is your pee up, tube, just your to be pee clear. Tube yep. From your bladder out where you evacuate the urine above the opening to your vagina and below the clitoral area. There's that tube and it feels good to be touched on the outside, that spongy tissue. Uh, and it also feels good to touch it up on the cave, the roof of the cave. And then you have on the bottom of the cave, more erectile tissue. That's called your perineal sponge. That's in the space. It looks like a little brain or a little prostate. And that little tissue is on the bottom below the vaginal canal and above the rectum. So it's tissued, uh, it's um, squeezed between those two. So you've got erectile tissue, erectile tissue, erectile tissue, erectile tissue. You basically have your entire vaginal canal 
is completely surrounded, embraced, I'd like to say, mm -hmm. with spongy tissue that when it gets full of blood, which is called engorged or to nest, that spongy tissue feels more pleasure. So can you imagine that if you only ever touched the tip of your clitoris and you only had a penis go inside you, well, of course you would never have orgasms from intercourse because you didn't get a hard on. You didn't get an erection. You need a yoni erection, not just the clitoris, which actually will pop like a little penis. It gets a clitoral hard on. Yeah, and the shaft gets hard and sticks out so you feel more pleasure. But that inserting of the penis and his body pressing on that those vestibular bulbs, those little punching bags as he goes in and out, the little arms hugging his penis around your vagina, his penis going along the top of your vaginal canal makes my mouth water to talk about. Isn't that funny? Um, <laughs> get, you get all turned on when yeah, you talk yeah. about sex. Um, all of those things and the in and the out of all of that tissue moving. If you've got good blood flow, if you've got a good massage beforehand, maybe some oral pleasuring, you can be hands-free. You can just be rubbing your partner's body, kissing. He can be making love to you or she can be making love to you. And you can have orgasms from just the stimulation of the vaginal canal. And all it takes is just patience, mm -hmm. letting yourself get turned on, not rushing it, getting that blood flow going, and it works perfectly. Now that only thing that could be a problem in that case is if your vaginal tissue is thinning and it hurts, and I have some solutions for that too. Okay. That's great. First, let's talk about how a woman's sex drive changes throughout the month because you talk about this in your book and it's something that I really like to talk about. And I told my husband about this when we first were married and I, I laid it all out for him really clearly about when, when I am most horny and when he can take advantage of that. <laughs> Because we, we really do change. And I even think that women, we need something different depending on where we are in our cycle or where we're feeling. Like you said, even in menopause, you're still cyclical oh, throughout yeah. the month. You are. And, yeah. And there's some times where you can handle a quickie, you know, like, hey, let's just, let's get to it. And I don't need any foreplay. And then there's other times where you need the romance, you need the sex, that the intimacy, the in connection with that partner, the spiritual connection in order to, to feel the pleasure. So let's, let's talk about that, Susan. Well, you have a five day horny window right around ovulation leading up to and during ovulation. And even if you're not ovulating anymore, you're still running on that 28 day cycle. So, uh, yeah, which is important to know, by the way, that's, yeah, that's good. Yeah, exactly. Most no, women don't you, think that you, you want to, you, if you pay attention to your vaginal, um, juices, yeah. um, one of the things that I do is I put my estrogen, I use a bi -est cream in shea butter as a bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. And I put that right up inside my vagina every day. And then I have a testosterone cream also in shea butter because those carrier creams that they do your bioidenticals in are full of petroleum poison. Yeah. They don't give a crap about us. You have to give a crap about yourself and you have to ask a lot of questions about everything. So I've, every day I feel up inside my vagina with my clean finger and I apply the cream. Yeah. And then I put the testosterone right on my clitoral structure, right on the outside of my clitoris. Where, it, can I ask where you get it from, Susan? Or is, yeah. like, is it over the counter? No. Um, no. These are prescriptions done okay. by my doctor. And okay. I was going to say shake to get it in shea nut butter would be really tough, I would think, through a prescription. It's, it's easy because it's a compounded bioidentical. So okay. it's a compounding pharmacy rather than, rather than like a regular, you know, CVS or what's your right. Canadian, what's your no, big No, I have like a, I go to a bioidentical uh, compounding pharmacy for mine. Oh, I just yeah. didn't think I could be specific about what I wanted their carrier oil to be, but maybe I should try and ask. <laughs> it's nice. The Shea is my favorite. Um, I don't know 
that it's organic shea butter. Mm -hmm. I was using an organic coconut oil. I was going to say coconut would work. Hey? And I really liked that. Yeah. The only problem is when before the coronavirus, when we were traveling, if we would travel someplace hot, it was very melty. Mm. So I had switched to the shea butter, but um, it, it's been nagging in the back of my head to check and see if I could get an organic shea butter. I don't yeah. know if it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when I put it, when I insert my finger into my vagina every day, I have a good sense of um, how lubricated am I? What is my vaginal secretion experience like? I'm just monitoring myself all the time and noticing, oh, it's, I can, I, I still ovulate even though I don't menstruate. Right. I still feel like I have that, you know, egg yolk type of yeah. slimy goo sometimes come out. Yeah. Other times it's more like there's a lot of protein in it where it's kind of got little granules in it. Yeah. Um, other times it's just, um, just kind of slick and watery. So I'm, I like to stay in tune with my secretions just um, to always feel my vaginal health and make sure it's staying plump and lubricated. I've done a ton of vagina work on myself. I'm 58 right now, I'll be 59 in a couple of months. And um, I had about, when I was 55, a lot of pain with intercourse and the, the hormones weren't really fixing the problem. Okay. And I think a lot of women think, oh, if I just did estrogen cream, it would fix it. Well, it doesn't necessarily. And then I started taking the nitric oxide and that really helped a lot. But what I ended up doing was um, I ended up doing some CO2 lasers, intravaginal CO2 laser treatments. And I was also getting incontinence. So I was having, there's two kinds of incontinence. There's uh, stress incontinence and urge incontinence. And stress incontinence is when you laugh or you jump and you pee your pants a little bit. And um, that's like, per, you know, the stress of pressure. And then urge is when you feel like you have to pee and you feel like you're going to pee your pants if you don't run to the bathroom. And I just had, mo had both. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> And so um, I did a couple of things, and one of them was I did some O shots, the orgasm shot, which is the PRP from my oh, own you did. blood. Okay. Injected into my clitoral structure and up you into did. Oh, the wow. bladder sling. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was really good. I can co I'll come back to that and we can talk about that because that was amazing. Amazing, yeah. But then I also had the CO2 laser into my vaginal tissue. It shoots out the laser. Similar if you've ever had or heard of Fraxel, which is what you get on your face or your neck or your decolletage or your arms to get rid of the age spots. It does, it shoots the lasers in to your skin subcutaneously and burns a couple layers down in the, in the epidermal layer. And that, that doesn't sound like that would hurts feel good. Like oh my gosh. Karen, oh, it hurts. it hurts. They say, oh, it doesn't hurt that much. You don't have that many, you know, nerve endings in your vagina. I'm like, I got a lot of nerve endings in my vagina. I don't know about you, but I got a ton of nerves in yeah. my vagina. So, <laughs> so the subcutaneous damage recruits collagen and healing factors okay. and strengthens the tissue. Now, there's another kind of, those are mostly like Mona Lisa, and there's a couple of different brands of the CO2 laser. And I think those lasers are best for when you have vaginal mucosal tissue problems. It's thinning, it's atrophying, it hurts, you know, that kind of thing. If you are more on the, my tissue is okay, but I, I have incontinence issues, then look to our F devices, radio frequency devices, they actually go in deeper and help the sling that holds the bladder up. They can help regenerate new tissue in that urinary area to hold that up and to shore that up because it starts to did that one hurt? As you age. I haven't done the RF because oh, okay. the CO2 and the O shots 
fixed my problems. Okay. So I didn't have to do the RF, but uh, I've talked to a number of, I have a lot of gynecologist friends. I've got a Mm -hmm. lot of doctor friends. I've got a lot of sexual regenerative medicine friends. It's the circle I run in. And, um, they, they tell me that they use the RF, the deeper one for the incontinence and the CO2 multi-pass device for the vaginal mucosal issue. Mm-hmm. But, but since I did all that, there's a new DIY FDA approved home device. I've got one. Can I go get it? It's yeah. right here. All go right, get hang it. On a go get it. I want to see this thing. <laughs> You've got to talk for a few minutes. I'll be right back. Take a minute. (laughs) I'm going to just explain to my audience what PRP is because for many of you, you're probably like, well, what the heck is that? I love PRP. PRP is blood platelet therapy where they actually take out your own blood and they put it into a machine that whirs it, whirls it around and brings it down to the blood platelets. And then they take those blood platelets and they re and they inject them into injury sites in the body. This is how I've used it. So I'm going to ask her why, how it worked inside the vagina for her bladder. But you take that, those blood platelets from your own body and you can inject them into, if let's say you've got, you know, in a deteriorating shoulder or a knee, um, you can also do it, actually they'll, they'll do it on your face to regenerate the face. So that's blood platelet therapy. So I was just telling them what that was, Susan. Yeah, great. So you had the blood platelet therapy, the PRP done for the incontinence and it worked. Yeah, I've had it injected into my whole clitoral structure and then okay. the opening to my it's vagina, the injected like with under- needles. You don't feel it because you're numb. Okay. Oh, it's just not, you're not, you can't see it <laughs> okay. and you don't feel it. Okay. Um, it actually is, it's not bad. Um, you, you do feel it, but it's not bad. Okay. Um, it's totally worth it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I had the opening to my vagina, the introidal sphincter. We keep coming back to that because that's a, a place of pain for a lot of women. They have episiotomy okay. tears, childbirth trauma. Um, it's where it gets really sore when you have a dip in estrogen. It's, it's a problem area. I had always pain at the bottom of it. And I've even had the PRP injected into that spot. Wow. It's like spot solutions for yeah. the things that are the problem. The, the muscle uh, sling that holds up the bladder can be fortified with your own PRP and it can be injected into your clitoris and your clitoris being spongy tissue soaks it up and it regenerates that tissue. If you ride horseback, if you're a biker, if you've had any kinds of accidents, you have a a lot of women have also gotten traumatized in the, all that genital tissue from various things. So what the PRP does is I think you probably said this while I was gone. It, it regenerates new tissue in the locations where you put it. Yeah. It's amazing. I've also had, um, yeah, you're the done on your lift. face. I've had the vampire facelift yep. and, the vamp- and the and the PRP uh, fillers. Yep. So uh, this is her- yeah. She's not when she says facelift. She's not mean surgical facelift. It's you. You put your own blood. The PRP that I was explaining. The blood platelets. Yeah. They put it back into your face to help you regenerate your face, yes. and it works. I have never seen anything work so well for like if you have any sort of deterioration or arthritis in any sort of joints. Yeah. Uh, back pain, uh, disc problems. I have seen it work miracles. It costs a fortune, but it is worth every penny. <laughs> yes. I've also had hair restoration. I I'm wearing a, a hair piece right now. My hair is very fine and thin. And because I had a glute, a, an undiagnosed gluten intolerance for so many years, I gave up gluten when I was 50. I was at the point where I couldn't even walk upstairs. My joints were so gone. And uh, now I'm 58. Uh, almost 59. And um, my gut is better. My joint problems are gone. My hair has started growing back in. Um, It's amazing what can be done. And I had the PRP done in my head and it grows. You just have it. You've had PRP all over clitoris to the scalp. I love it, Susan. I love how open you are about it all. (laughs) Oh yeah, of course. You look amazing. You look amazing. I don't mind saying whatever I do. Yeah, me too. You know, it's, I'm here to serve. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so this okay. is my current thing that I'm totally in love with. It's called the V Fit. Okay. And it's a do it yourself home device. And I want to give this one away so I don't want to mess up the box too much. It's made by Joy Lux. Joy Lux. And um, actually, I have a special Joy Lux page. If you go to joylux.com, J O Y L U X.com slash Susan, they let me, I'm kind of like, um, I love them so much that I'm like a spokesperson for them. And um, they give you a bottle, a $65 bottle of a beautiful vaginal rejuvenating, replenishing um, solution that you can use with the joy with the v fit uh for free when you use my link that's how they know i'm sending people to them i like them to i like them to do a special thing where women get an extra thing when they hear about it from me nice. and this thing is so cool yeah i like to spread the love you know and let people yeah. know i'm supporting them this is wow okay heaven. okay so this is the joy Lux v fit and it's an intravaginal device. And there are a lot of women who they haven't had a partner for a long time. And then they have a partner and they're worried. They feel like their vagina has been like welded shut. Yeah. Like yep. they can barely get a finger <laughs> in. And this is so soft and warm and it lights up. I don't know that this one's charge so i may not for those that are listening it looks like a white dildo with a curve so, to it yeah okay it lights up, up. yeah yeah so <laughs> this is red light therapy oh. and you can hear it vibrating yeah so two and, in one and it warms up okay and See so what's the red light doing so you know what red light therapy is i it's, do but explain it, yeah it, it it is essentially mitochondrial your mitochondria is the battery inside every cell in your body and it improves mitochondrial function because we're light beings we're photosynthesizers we need the sun to make vitamin d we need the sun to energize our cells and the red light is a healing light frequency. So when you put it, when you insert this intravaginally for 10 minutes every other day for like three to eight weeks, you increase your vaginal tone from the vibration. You increase mitochondrial function. So your vaginal tissue multiplies more quickly. It slows down as you age and thins. This improves your vaginal mucosal growth. So the lining of your vagina becomes more resilient and newer. And the um, warmth is essentially um, similar to what the CO2 laser is doing, but in a slow, it's like making mm. a, a nice stock pot of delicious stock low and slow instead of just going into the office and like blasting, you know, lasers into your vagina, this, the warmth of this is actually pulling in the collagen into the tissue. And so it's tightening, toning, getting new tissue growth in a really beautiful, um, non-painful, pleasurable way. So I, I love this product. And actually one of my girlfriends got one and she said, man, I did that thing. And ah, I had to stop doing it for a while. And I was like, I think you did too much too fast. I mean, it's, you worry that something that's a home device could compete with a fifth. This is about $500. Okay. And it's how to fix your vagina yourself. It's vaginal, it's at home vaginal restoration. Amazing. The first device that's ever been like this. The vibration's not there to give you orgasms. It's up inside you, toning like a Kegel. It's basically right. like doing Kegels for you. And, you know, so this is not a sex toy. This is a home medical device, an FDA approved home medical device. And for, I used to have, the only thing that I could tell women to do was to go get the CO2 laser or the RF device. Hurts 
like a sum gun. Yeah. And there's a lot of recovery. Don't believe them when they're like, it's an in and out lunchtime procedure. Yeah, it's your lunchtime procedure, but I'm <laughs> sore for like weeks afterward. There's no pain with this. And one of the things that I really like about it, and you know, we started out talking about libido. And we said, when you have more vaginal lubrication, when you feel your panties are moist, you have more desire. When you feel lubricated, this thing really gets your lubrication going. And it engorges the up inside of you that you can't get. So if you're one of those women who was like, hey, you know how earlier when you were talking about penetration orgasms or orgasms from intercourse are a learned skill, or well, I'd like to learn that, you know, I'd like to be able to do that. So I, I could be like hands free and having orgasms while my, I'm having sex with my husband, you know, or making love. Well, this to me is one of those things that can help you get there because so many women, there's no problem getting the clitoral tissue, you know, the external clitoral tissue stimulated, but how do you get the internal how do you get that perineal sponge? How do you get that urethral sponge, the G-spot? How do you get all that tissue really full of blood? Take flow, the nitric oxide supplement. Use your V-Fit and take a big spoonful of cod liver oil every day. And you're like halfway there or more. I mean, those three things are good for all but the most intractable vaginal atrophy and incontinence issues. And so then if this doesn't work, then you can go get a laser up your yoni, right? right? Yeah. But you try this first. It's like, I don't know, a third the price of a single yeah. treatment of the laser. Yeah. So I love this company. This is a woman-owned company. The nice. I, it's funny because they sell these through doctor's offices. And I am not an MD. I'm a, I'm a sex expert. Yeah. And uh, I, I called them so many times. And I was like, I really want, I really love that product. And I really, because I, I was speaking at um, Upgrade Labs, the Bulletproof um, yeah. Dave Asprey's uh, Upgrade Labs in Santa Monica. And I was on a panel there talking about women's sexual health with one of the reps for this. So she gave me one and I used it and I was like, oh my God. All right. Amazing. Game changer. I love wow. this. Wow. Yeah. So I'm glad I could show it to you. Me um, too. It's really incredible. And, th and then they finally let me, um, you know, they kind of said, all right, well, we'll make a special page for you so you can tell women about it because we, we want you to be an evangelist for us because you are so gung-ho. So I'm like the first sex expert that they've worked with because um, I'm just so gung-ho about this v -fit. Yeah. And so Very your, fun. your story was kind of leading into that. Like, so you would kind of hit this 50, I think you said 55 when all this kind of started to go wrong and you got this. Yeah. And so things are back to normal again. Oh yeah. And the cycling, we were talking about the cycling of a woman throughout the month and that there's were five days of ovulation. And is it about the same then if you, once you get to menopause where it's about five days, is it, or a week to where you are more lubricated down there? No, it's, it's more like, um, it's just easier to want to have sex during the, your five day horny window, but mm -hmm. you, you're, really what it is, is you, you always want something different every day. And you, you Karen, you yeah. started out the whole segment saying you want something different every day. I'd say every moment we want something yeah. different. So you could start out saying, well, babe, I don't know if I even want to have sex, but if you rub my back, we'll see what happens. Right. <laughs> or rub my feet or rub my head or whatever, or give me a yoni massage and let's see if we can get her going, you know? And a lot of times what guys think is, oh, she's rejecting me. She doesn't want me. She's not, she's asexual. Maybe she's a lesbian. You know, they got all these, a million, you know, it's her hormones. It's her you know. hormones. I, yeah. How many times do I say to guys, it has nothing, it really has nothing to do with her hormones. If she liked having sex with you, she'd be having sex with you. You need to work on being good in bed in the ways that are important to her. And they're like, oh, you know, because a lot of guys, they, because they're testosterone dominant, they're more confident in their skills than they should be, frankly. Um, and a lot of them are like two trick ponies, you know, yeah. and they just can't understand why it worked this time and it doesn't work that time, you know, because they can't understand how, I don't want to say volatile in a bad way, I want to say, or mercurial in a bad way, but just, you know, changeable how we, I mean, that's the beauty of women. We are, you know, we're just like 
gurgling water constantly changing, you know, the river banks of the man and the water and the river is the woman, right? And, and, you know, of course, that goes across, you know, I think there's much more gender fluidity now in the world too. So when I say the masculine feminine, I don't want people to be like, well, I'm more like the river. Man. Okay, if you're more like, the, that's awesome. You know, yeah. like, do you, right? But it, it's generally more the masculine feminine ruled by our sex hormones that give us our sexual behaviors. And if we as women can understand what we want in the moment, because a lot of women say, well, I don't know what I want. I just know what I'm getting isn't what I want. Okay, well, what could you want that would be slightly different? Ask for that teach him how to have a wider range of what he does and get on the same team, which is let's get this Yoni kick started. Yeah. Because once she gets going, she's good to go. But she takes a while to get warmed up. That's just the way the Yoni is. It's not ready to go. Like a it, man. Yeah. It takes work. And so if we can move from the patriarchal view of sex to the matriarchal view of sex. And what I found is that when men understand how different we are than they, and they get over their, you know, feeling of victimization and rejection and realize it's not about them. It's that you need different things. And then when you can tell them what you need and they're open to hearing it, and then you're on the same team together, like you together, you know, kind of like ganging up on the Yoni to get her going, right? That really helps her relax and get engorged and get lubricated. And, and, and she wants fun. She wants no pressure. She no. wants to be transported into pleasure. And the good news is that the masculine does like to do that. He, the, the thing he, he'll give up his pleasure for yours, yep. for sure. Yep. He will. He's devoted to your pleasure. He just can't figure out what it's going to take. <laughs> no, and we and women, and I've been there too, where you get really nervous to speak up. Even if you've yeah. been married for 20 years, you still have that like, I don't want to offend my partner by saying, um, actually, maybe don't do it like that. Do it like this. But men, they want to hear it. They do. They do. I have yeah. a free ebook I can give yes. all your listeners. It's called The Sexual Soulmate Pact. P-A-C-T, like an agreement. And it is a simple step-by-step um, -step plan that couples have to um, understand. There's just a couple simple techniques. And I know we're, we're running long, so I won't go into it here. Um, but I make it really simple to be able to have you feel super comfortable as the feminine saying exactly what you need and having him as the masculine be super comfortable hearing it and love it and want it and thank you for it. And it will explode passionate lovemaking. So that's at sexual soulmate pact, P -A -C -T .com. I encourage couples to print it out at home, read it and discuss it and then enter into the pact and practice the pact because um, it really does fix almost everything wrong in a sexual relationship <laughs> once you can start talking about everything and anything with yeah. joy and juiciness. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Oh my gosh, Susan, we could just keep going. I know. I, know. Like, I feel like I've barely scratched the surface. There's so back. many, so many more things <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about. So just quickly though, because I'm sure that my listeners are wanting more too. So tell us like you have so much amazing things. You've got books, but you also have programs online, don't you? I do. Yeah. yeah. Um, lots and lots of lovemaking techniques, expanded orgasm, female liquid orgasm, the seduction trilogy, relationship magic, sexual soulmates. Um, Steamy Sex Ed video collection is really good. That's um, eight videos. And I also make DVDs for people who are like in crappy internet locations. Yeah. Um, because lots of people still watch Or them. haven't got with the times. Yeah. Well, a lot <laughs> There's of lots of those. Really bad internet. Yeah. And then it's hard to watch video over their internet. Um, that's 200 passionate lovemaking techniques. Um, I'd be happy to send it to you. It's 200 lovemaking techniques that are heart connected, conscious lovemaking techniques. And it, I made it for women to watch with their male bodied partners wow. so that the male could see how the woman wants to be made love to. Wow. And it gives couples 200 yeah. different you're not you're gonna be able really to find something <laughs> good techniques every time i watched i'm like oh my god i know how did i miss that one so the more <laughs> skills you have the better your sex life and yeah. when you have something you can watch together that's not porn yeah that is you know female centric but sexy 
And honestly, your guy could learn a few things too, because the stuff he's watching on porn is disgusting, degrading, and disrespectful to women. Yeah, it does not teach and them so, anything. No. It, well, no. it teaches them it teaches them horrible things. It horrible them things. To, yeah. Their expectations are warped. You know, your videos would be something like that. Like I have a son, he's only six, so I can't think about this right now, but for women that have boys, like teenage boys, like that's, you should be, you should create a video for teenage boys that have that kind of stuff. Like here's how to pleasure the woman. Here's how a woman's body works. I would buy that in a heartbeat for my kid, both of my kids, my girl and my boy actually, because they should both know at a young age because they learn from porn and that's becoming a serious problem is they're Um, learning these and they're becoming very sexually numbed because they're watching too much porn at such a young age. And our girls think they need to act like porn stars, which breaks my friggin' heart. Me too. Oh my God. That should be your next project, Susan. I will endorse it. First I have to recover from coronavirus. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Recover fresh from your coronavirus, but then put that on your list. Yeah. Uh, so before we go, because yeah. you started this conversation with, I haven't had sex in five weeks, Karen, or two yeah. months or something like that. Yeah, yeah. How often do you usually have sex? I'd love to know. Once or twice a week. Oh, super. Yeah. That's, that's enough for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I enjoy that, but I like I'm to have it for a, a fairly girl. long time. Um, you know, a couple hours. I like it to be very slow. I like to get full body massage. I like to get a yoni massage first. I like kissing. I like, you know, just generally, I like a really long, slow time. And our daughter is 23. So she's just graduating now from college. And so she's been out of the house for a while. So we do have that time right now. Yeah. I was going to say, oh gosh, I wish I had that time. It's usually downstairs and (laughs) see if we can. (laughs) You got to do the best you can do right now. But we always lock the door and said to our daughter, even when she was, you know, 10, 11, 12, we, you know, dad's going to give mom a massage. We'll we'll be in the bedroom for a few hours. If you need anything, just knock, but you know, we'll, we're going to relax for a while. And then I remember one time, Tim wears these cotton fisherman pants when he's giving me a massage and um, like a yoni massage. And uh, Taylor is the name of our daughter. And um, he was walking down the hall in those pants and she was coming toward him and she goes, Oh, going to give mom a massage, huh, dad? <laughs> it was like she figured it out, yeah. <laughs> it's good for your children to know you make love. That's a setting a good model for intimate connection. So there are great ways to do it. Yeah. Well, thank you for everything. For You're such me. a, just a wealth of information. I just, oh, like gosh. I said, I just would love, the love to scratch in the surface. I know. So, and she's got an amazing YouTube video, you guys, our YouTube channel. <laughs> Check out the YouTube channel. What was the, the better lover, just better, better lover. Better lover. Com lover. Com right there. Yeah. You can, I'm going to put all these links in the show notes, but if you don't get to them, then betterlover.com. Good. She's got incredible YouTube videos about everything under the sun that has to do with sex. So check it out for more information. I'll also send you a special link for a 25% discount on my flow supplement oh, too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The panty moistener. <laughs> the panty and also moistener. it helps your guy with his erectile function. So when it's, if he's starting to flag a little bit, you know, put that on his vitamin tray. <laughs> Perfect. Gotta keep him going too. <laughs> Here's to moist vaginas, ladies. All right. Yes, so <laughs> I'll toast to that. <laughs> Great. Okay. Thank you so much, Susan. Thanks, Karen.